Welcome to NHSN's Quick Learn Training on the MDRO and CDI Monthly Denominator Form for Facility-Wide Inpatient or FAC-Wide In Surveillance. In this presentation, we will describe the required data entry on the monthly FAC-Wide In Denominator record. The purpose of this Quick Learn is to introduce the FAC-Wide In MDRO and CDI Monthly Denominator Form. This training applies to all facility types that may be completing this form in NHSN's patient safety component. After viewing this quick learn, you will be able to accurately complete the form for both internal and CMS inpatient quality reporting purposes. By the end of this quick learn, you will be able to locate the MDRO and CDI denominator form in the NHSN application, calculate the FACWIDE in data to enter on the form, and make an accurate selection for CDI test type. We will start by providing a brief overview of the purpose and use of this monthly denominator form. The denominator form is a summary record in which total counts of patient days and admissions are entered into NHSN on a monthly basis. The summary record contains a count of all patients who were admitted to any inpatient unit in your healthcare facility throughout the reporting month. This denominator information is used to help generate your facility's rates and SIRs for lab ID reporting and represents the total population in your facility who is at risk of acquiring an MDRO. To locate the MDRO and CDI denominator form, click the Summary Data tab on the left-hand navigation menu in NHSN. Then click Add to enter a new monthly denominator form. The next screen you see in NHSN will require you to select the type of summary data you wish to enter. To locate the Lab ID denominator form, select MDRO and CDI Monthly Denominator All Locations from the drop-down menu and click Continue directly below your selection. NHSN uses a single facility-wide inpatient denominator which covers every active inpatient location within the facility. In order to make the reporting process more efficient, all eligible and active inpatient units should be aggregated to a non-physical location titled FACWIDE IN. This location code is automatically available from the drop-down menu on the denominator form. The following section is specific to the FACWIDE IN denominator form for acute care hospitals and critical access hospitals. If your facility is a long-term acute care hospital or an inpatient rehabilitation facility, you can skip to the next section starting on slide 22. The FACWIDE IN denominator record for acute care hospitals is shown on this slide. The picture here highlights the three required rows of data that need to be entered in order to successfully save the form. Note that there are three formulas listed Note that there are formulas listed in the instructions for line two and three so that users can see exactly how to calculate the correct patient days and admissions on those lines. Next, we will go through the requirements for data entry on each line. The first line of the denominator form represents the total number of patient days and admissions from all active inpatient locations in your facility for the given month. This excludes counts from outpatient locations or any location that is enrolled in NHSN as a separate facility. Line 2 on the denominator form is a subset of line 1 and represents the total number of patient days and admissions from all active inpatient units with the exception of CMS certified inpatient rehabilitation units and CMS certified inpatient psychiatric units, also known as ERF and IPF units. 
totals from these two units are to be subtracted from the totals found on line one and the new totals are entered on line two. The formula to help calculate the number of patient days and admissions for line two is available on the denominator form and can be seen on this slide next to the gold star. Line three is also a subset of line one and represents the total number of patient days and admissions from all active inpatient units with the exception of CMS certified ERF and IPF units, as well as NICU and well baby units and nurseries. These unit types are to be subtracted from the total patient days and admissions that were entered on line one and the new totals entered on line three. The formula to help calculate the number of patient days and admissions for line three is shown on the slide and is available on the denominator form. As a reminder, please remember that the lab ID denominator form only collects the total number of patient days and admissions and is not concerned with the infection status of any of the patients. All patients housed in the applicable units should be counted in the denominators as they represent your population at risk. Also remember that CMS certified psych and rehab units are identified by a unique CCN that is different from the acute care hospital's CCN. Let's walk through an example of how a hospital should report their FACWIDE and denominator record. In our example, the hospital had a total of 1,000 patient days and 500 admissions across all inpatient units during the month of January 2021. The hospital has an ERF unit, which had 200 patient days and 100 admissions, and an IPF unit, which had 100 patient days and 50 admissions. Finally, the facility has several NICU and well baby nurseries, which contributed a combined total of 350 patient days and 75 admissions. What numbers should the facility enter on line one of the FACWIDE in denominator form? Feel free to pause this video to complete the calculation. The correct answer is 1000 patient days and 500 admissions. Remember, the only units that should be excluded from line one are outpatient locations or any location that is enrolled in NHSN as a separate facility. Now, what values of patient days and admissions should the facility enter on line two of the FACWIDE and denominator form? The formula for calculating line two denominators is shown on the screen, highlighted in yellow. The correct answer is 700 patient days and 350 admissions. The 1,000 total patient days were subtracted by the combined totals of ERF and IPF patient days to equal 700 patient days. The 500 total number of admissions was also subtracted by the combined totals of ERF and IPF admissions to equal 350 admissions. Finally, what values should the hospital report on line three of the denominator form? The formula for calculating line three denominators is shown on the screen. Feel free to pause this video to complete the calculation. The correct answer is 350 patient days and 275 admissions. Line three values are a subset of line one and line two denominators in which counts from ERFs, IPF units, NICUs, and well baby units are subtracted. To warn you of a potential data quality issue, a pop-up warning message will appear in NHSN if a facility enters patient day or admission values on lines two or three that are less than 25% of the values entered on line one. There are two ways to clear this warning message. 
The first is to return to the summary form to review and correct the data entry if applicable. The second is to confirm the data entry is correct and to save the form without making any changes. The following section is specific to the FACWIDEN denominator form for long-term acute care hospitals or LTACs. The FACWIDEN denominator form for LTACs is shown on the screen. You may notice a change on this form compared to the previous years. A new required question has been added under line one, asking you to indicate if your LTAC facility has any CMS certified inpatient rehabilitation or inpatient psychiatric units, also known as ERF and IPF units, respectively. To answer this question, you can select yes or no from the dropdown. If you select yes, line two will appear on the screen and be required for completion. Line two is a subset of line one and represents the total number of patient days and admissions from all active inpatient units with the exception of CMS certified rehab units and CMS certified psych units. Totals from these two units are to be subtracted from the totals found on line one and the new totals entered on line two. The following section is specific to the FACWIDEN denominator form for freestanding inpatient rehabilitation facilities or ERFs. This screenshot highlights the required fields that need to be entered by freestanding ERFs in order to successfully save the form. You may notice a change on this form compared to previous years. A new required question has been added under line one, which states, does your facility have a CMS certified inpatient psychiatric unit? To answer this question, you can select yes or no from the dropdown. If you selected yes, line two will appear on the form. Totals from the CMS certified psych units should be subtracted from the totals found on line one and the new totals entered on line two. This final section will cover CDI test type and reporting no events on the FACWIDEN monthly denominator and is applicable to all facility types. Another element captured on the monthly denominator form is the CDI test type. This is the primary testing method used for C. difficile by your facility's laboratory. CDI test type is collected on the FACWIDEN denominator record for the third month of each quarter. Note that an SIR for CDI will not be generated for the quarter until your facility has selected the CDI test type for that quarter. A drop-down box is available on the form that provides the common methods used for C. difficile testing. The pre-populated list covers all common tests used by all labs across the country. Please do not select other as your CDI test type if possible. Next, you will learn the actions that you need to take if you do select other as your CDI test type. If you do select other, you will be required to use the free text entry field to provide the type of test your laboratory uses. If other is selected as CDI test type, a pop-up warning message will appear when you save the form. There are two ways to clear this warning message. One way is to return to the summary form to review and select another CDI test type if possible. The second way is to acknowledge the warning and save the form without making any changes. The final section to complete on the denominator form is the organism selection box. If you've selected the correct organisms on the corresponding monthly reporting plan, the check boxes on the table will be automatically checked by default as shown here on the slide. Next to each organism, there is a check box to select if there were no events identified for that organism during the month. 
If you add an event into NHSN after checking the Report No Events box, the system will automatically uncheck the box for you. Thank you for viewing this training. You should now be comfortable with the data entry requirements on the FACWIDE IN denominator form. It is important for you to ensure that your denominators are entered accurately in NHSN as they are used in the calculation of your facility's rates and SIRs. The NHSN website offers additional resources that can help users accurately complete their lab ID denominator forms and view their submitted data in a line list. Thank you for taking the time to view this NHSN quick learn about completing the MDRO and CDI monthly denominator form. If you have any questions or concerns, please email us at the NHSN Help Desk at nhsn at cdc.gov.